Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to build our stash with collage papers using a everyday item that we have, very inexpensive, the coffee filter. I absolutely love how the coffee filter paper collages on my art journal and mixed media papers and I highly recommend that you fill your stash with painty papers using coffee filters. So how can you use these? I'm going to give you some ideas. On this page, which I did recently, I cut a regular size coffee filter down to size. It had some paint paint on it, different colors, and it was the perfect addition to my napkin and my background. It gives that texture. It works terrifically. Here are some other ways that you can use the coffee filters. Here I had a couple coffee filters that had the same colors and I collaged and created the entire background. When you collage with the coffee filters, you get a, it's a different effect. So the colors somehow get brighter. Here I've used some, some coffee filters along with other collage papers to create the background of this mini composition book. A background for an ATC. Here's another composition book where I've taken a coffee filter and put them on. And if it doesn't fit, like on here, you can piece it together. The coffee filters collage down so well. Here we had multiple ripped up coffee filters and you can see the texture by ripping it up and then I just collaged them down. Perfect background. This is a four by four magnet. Here's another coffee filter. I may have added some embellishments and that's a background on a five by seven. You can also stamp, use your stamps and stamp images. Here are these cone flowers. I just stamped on a coffee filter and then cut it out to make the perfect focal image. Here I've stamped with my hydrangea stamp on coffee filters and the leaves. On this one, I created some of this heart embellishment and the yellow part is a coffee filter that I've used to collage the element down. I also use some coffee filters to make this cone flower. I cut out some of the petals from coffee filters and it gives that really lovely effect. So I'm going to take all of this away and show you how to do this. It's incredibly easy and it's a fun way to spend a couple hours. So what do you need to get started? Well, coffee filters, of course. These are just garden variety, dollar store coffee filters. If you're fortunate enough to find some commercial size ones, they are bigger and that gives you more collage painty paper goodness. You can also use the cone filters. They are a bit thicker. They collage a little bit different, but I love them just as much. And I love having collage papers that are different weights. So outside of the coffee filters, you will need an assortment of paints. Whatever color you want, acrylic paints. You want to go permanent. You can go Liquitec Basics, Artist Loft. You don't need to pay. You, you spend, you know, the big bucks and have the artist quality paint for, for this purpose. But you do want a color medium that is permanent because when you have these in your stash and you grab them out, you don't want to have to worry about having it reactivate and smudging. You can use craft paints 
as well. Any kind that's permanent, I also use my ink tense blocks. What I don't use are watercolors. I don't use uh, magicals or starburst sprays. I don't use my distress inks because none of that is permanent and that's going to reactivate. So colors. Now you need a way of getting it on to the coffee filter. And you can use makeup sponges, dollar store makeup sponges. What I prefer to use are the Ranger blending foams. Now this is on that handle. I've also made my own. I got some, I was a, re I am a retired teacher and I ripped off the stamp and put a piece of Velcro and made my own from that. I've also made some with wooden spools to have more applicators. These I clean. I spray with my Murphy's oil soap after I'm done and I clean them and I use them again and again and again and they actually last quite a long time. You will also need a spray bottle with just water. You will need an assortment of stencils, 12 inch, whatever kind of stencils that you like. Anything goes there. You can use bubble wrap, other mark making tools, or some stamps. A script stamp is a good basic, the dot stamp. You can use archival ink if you wish. With the paints, don't forget to grab black and white to stencil on, or you can use, alternatively, instead of white, you can just use white gesso. And gold and silver or metallics. If you got any metallic or iridescent paint, that would be a nice addition as well. So, let's get started. So, I'm putting two out. And I'm going to see if I can do multiples because this is a stash builder. I want to go as quick as possible. And I'm going to go through various colors. I also want to build my stash and I want to have yellow, orange. I'm going to go work my way around the color wheel so that I have the uh, collage papers or the fodder for collage in all the various colors and combinations. When you are mixing colors wet on wet, like we are in the first part of this video, you want to be sure to stick to colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. That way you're assured that they're not going to make mud. If you did green and red wet on wet, you're going to end up with a brown color that you may not want to be using. If you're unsure about a color combo, test it out off to the side first. So I am putting these on, on plastic sheets that were the packaging from stencils. And I'm using that so that I could lift this up and I can move it off to the side. So I'm taking my spray bottle and playing, spraying water over the coffee filters to get them wet. That's going to give us that watercolory muted look and it's going to blend the colors in a different way. Now I'm putting colors on my palette and right now I'm applying it with a makeup sponge which you can use if that's what you have. I later on go switch to the uh, Tim Holtz or the Ranger blending foams and I like them much better. For most of them, even if I'm sticking to the same color, like yellow, I do try to get two different tones of that color on here. So we're putting a base color underneath. Now, a word about the order that I'm doing things. Really, any order will work. You might get a slightly different effect. If you do it when the, the coffee filter is wet, it wicks out and it... Um, you get more of a watercolory look. 
So you're going to have to play with that and see what works for you. When I'm doing a stash builder, typically I want to do it in assembly line. But once you have the colors out, just go for it. And I find at the beginning of a stash builder, I'm really um, kind of rigid. And as I keep creating, I get looser and looser and the creativity really increases. So here I'm taking mark making tools. You don't need um, specialty materials. You can just stamp. These are collage papers. You're, you're, you may be ripping them up. You may be using parts. Really anything that makes it interesting is a go. So I'm grabbing stencils, DIY mark makers, bubble wrap. Um, And I'm here I'm adding orange onto the yellow. I like to have collage papers that um, have different color combinations. So I'll have yellow and teal, yellow and pink, yellow and orange, yellow and green. And that just builds the usability down the road. So now I can just lift this up and put it to the side and grab another two packaging sheets and continue with my stash builder. Now you can stop as I am showing here and as I do and use the heat tool to dry them. So moving right along, I'm just continuing with the yellow. I'm working my way around the color wheel and I want to have as I said, coffee filters, collage papers of various colors. Here I'm using um, Naples yellow and yellow oxide. I'm stamping, I'm stenciling, and I'm not too worried about making it perfect. The less perfect it is, the better those collage papers are. Doing a stash builder is a great time. It just turns off your thinking brain and turns on the creativity. So I've switched to using my craft mat underneath. Actually, this is just a barbecue mat. It isn't a ranger one. And these have dried and I'm just adding more detail, different stencils, different colors when it's dry. You can use homemade stamps like I'm using here pretty much whatever you want to use with marks will work. So we're just, I'm speeding up the rest of this video, but I am going through the colors and you'll see how I'm blending two colors, two shades of pink to get that base coat on. I've switched to the Ranger blending foams here. And I'm doing a lot more of the stamping and stenciling when it's all wet. And while I've sped up this video, I am going at a quick pace. I don't want to be overthinking this process. You're going, as you go through your stencils, uh, you're going to find that some really create really interesting patterns on here. And you're going to want to do that in different colors. So keeping track of it as you go. And I'm splattering with white or splattering with teal. Now some of the coffee filters I'm going to have a lot more on. Some are going to be very plain. And it's good to have a variety of papers in your stash because you want to have options when you go to using it. Here I'm mixing uh, teal with purple and stenciling on it, where the stencil really isn't up front. Dioxazine purple. I like some of the coffee filters that have just a very subtle pattern on it almost tone on tone. Those are some of my favorite ones. 
All the stencils that I'm using here are from the Crafters Workshop. Uh, there's just too many that I'm using to um, to mention and, and list them all, but I will list some of the, my favorites, all-time favorites, in the description box below. And these can be purchased at the TCW store or at Nini's Napkins or through my Amazon links as well. And there's coupon codes for a few of those in the description box. Some I'm mixing with white, some I'm mixing, you know, darker colors, you want different shades. Mandela stencils can be used here, 12 inch stencils, six inch, moving it around. This jungle vine stencil is collages so nice or stencils so nicely on these papers. I love that background as this dotted rings one. And just a reminder, while I'm doing this as a stash builder, you can do this when you have leftover paint. I keep blank coffee filters at the hand, at, right at, the, at on my right side in the in the when I'm creating, and then I can easily just grab a coffee filter, use up the leftover paint, and stencil with whatever stencils I have out at that time. Adding white to a stencil or to the coffee filter also just really adds to it. And there's no risk here. Worst case scenario, you end up with something that you absolutely dislike. It's a coffee filter. It's not a huge investment and you've learned something. You saw me use gold before. It's always a good addition, whether you're stenciling on it, stamping with it, or splattering. So bring out the metallics in your iridescence. So here you see me doing four coffee filters at the same time with the same base colors. Here I'm rubbing silver paint over it. it. Gives a bit of a different effect. This gentle leaf stencil, another winner. Makes a beautiful collage paper. And you can see because it's wet underneath, it is wicking out. And I like that effect. It gives that watercolory look. In between when I change colors, I do spray my work area down with Murphy's oil soap and just clean it up. I want a kind of a corally color, so I'm mixing Naples yellow and quinacridone magenta. I was thinking I could hold or use my punches to punch out shapes, hearts or circles or or stars. I would, I think that would be hard to punch out on the coffee filter. I think I would attempt to glue it down onto coffee paper first and then use the punch.
At the end, I do show all the coffee filters. Kind of a flip through. I love using blues with greens on a coffee filter. It's great for collaging leaves or making the earth. There was another one with tone on tone, dark green on light green for a very subtle patterning. Just adding more colors with more stenciling on some, not all. While I did most of this in one session, you can do it in several sessions. So now that they're all dry, I'm just flipping through them and I want to take out a few of them and I want to splatter with gold or silver. That just adds an extra little bit of bling to them and set that set it aside for it to dry. When if you do it with wet, it wicks out. When it's dry, you get a different effect, more um, realistic splatter. Now, if you have coffee filters that, you know, for whatever reason, there isn't a whole lot of color, you can always stop and add more color at any time. Here, I'm just adding pink to this, and it's making a lovely collage paper. So if even if it goes into your stash uh, incomplete, you can always add more at a later date. You can also use your archival ink to stamp patterns on. I like using my Coastal Escape stamp, Honeycomb stamp, my, my um, script stamp added to some of them as well. And if I don't do them at this point, I can always add this at another point. But right now I've got my script stamp, a few stamps out, and I'm just flipping through various ones and just adding doing that assembly line thing, which is just going to save time. So just like when you do a background, we're just adding layers of interest on these collage papers. Now you can also stencil on here once it's dry. And this one was, I think I found it actually in my stash. It wasn't part of the stash builder, but I decided that I wanted to add something to it. So I'm stenciling it on when it's dry. This one has tone on tone, but now I'm going to splatter with white. I have some white gesso there. I just thinned it, and I'm going to splatter a few of my coffee filters with white while I have it out. Don't worry if they tear. They're still totally usable. So let's just do a flip through and you can see. Now, some of these are more done than others and I prefer having some relatively plain ones in my stash, some that are a little bit more patterned and layered up because when I go to use them, I want a variety. So we have, and I will just file these in with colors. Alternatively, you can keep them all in one pouch together and flip through them. It's pretty easy to see.
Now you can always add color to these or stamping when you're creating. If I was creating a page and I needed a dot because I had circles or dots on it and I wanted it to work together, I could add it at that stage. So it's got lovely metallic paint on it. This one's really plain. Remember, it's highly unlikely that you, I mean, you could use this as a whole page, but a lot of times you're going to be ripping and using parts of it. Go get creative. <laughs> 